six arts or disciplines of tracking are who made the track, track identification, what happened here, or track interpretation, where was this animal or subject going, trailing, when was this track made, or when did this subject come through the area, track aging, why is the animal here, or subject here, ecological or environmental tracking, and how was that animal feeling? Reading the last five arcs much the same way you would read a novel, to get the sense of the subject's mindset, motivation, and intent. It's only through a solid foundation in the previous five arcs that you can make such inferences as to how the subject was feeling, what they were thinking, or where they might be now. In some cultures, the sixth art or discipline is referred to as spirit tracking. When studying the six disciplines of tracking, there are two important concepts to remember. The first is that the sequence in which these disciplines are presented helps to build your overall tracking abilities. Learning track features unique to each species, track measurements, trail widths, track patterns, pace, scat, hair, sign, and behaviors are all important aspects of being able to identify the subjects that left the disturbance. Knowing who made the tracks gives you parameters for what that subject might be doing, like pursuing specific survival needs or being pushed or pulled across the landscape due to predator-prey relationships or mating rituals. Likewise, being able to interpret pressure releases, track patterns, and signs such as incidental and accidental rubs helps with one of the two more difficult disciplines, trailing. It is easier to stay on a subject's trail if you know the subject's behaviors, needs, motivation, and if you can interpret their track and sign for speed, direction of travel, and changes in direction. Track aging considers all of the previously mentioned disciplines and includes wind changes, direct sunlight, temperature, dew, and rain events. To accelerate your accuracy at track aging, keep a weather journal and pay rapt attention to the three primary track aging zones, the horizon cut, wall, and floor cut. The track you made on Friday looks a little cleaner than the one that you made in you know, the later part of the day, which you can even see how there's not even a crisp track wall anymore. It's all just rounded and sloped. Um, yesterday's track. Ecological or environmental tracking deals with why the subject is in this spot at this specific time. Seasons, time of day, temperature, weather, food availability, predatory pressures, and population pressures play a lot. Remember that most subjects in a given area have survival needs. These needs are shelter, water, and food. With human subjects, add fire or warmth into the mix. The deer are a great teacher of how animals are pushed and pulled through their landscape and why they are there. Also, trees are an excellent way to determine what wildlife species you'll see in their understory. Trees indicate a certain type of understory that provides shelter, water, or food. Learn what each tree species in your area prefers for moisture content, acidity, and then explore the understory herbaceous plants and shrubs. Guaranteed, you'll find trails, runs, rubs, scrapes, and scat. Take an inventory of these things. And also know the diet and preferences of the animals that you're tracking. Human beings, when lost, for instance, rarely travel uphill. They seem to gravitate to openings like lake shores and streams. Knowing this aspect of environmental tracking can help aid you in a search and rescue effort. The last art, the how. This art is reserved for people who've had plenty of dirt time in the other five disciplines of tracking. The discipline of how the animal was feeling is based on educated conjecture. You need a mountain of verifiable and reproducible evidence and results before you can jump to conclusions. These conclusions, however, can be surprisingly accurate. Again, that accuracy is completely dependent on how solid your foundation is in the other five directions or disciplines of tracking. It is much like watching an American sitcom and being able to tell how the entire plot's going to unfold within the first five minutes. Those of you who have been TV junkies know exactly what I'm talking about. You know the storyline, 
and how it will resolve itself before the first commercial break. In the same way, you can get on a track and knowing the animal's environment, behavior, the age of the tracks, and the context of the scenes, the larders, the pushes and pulls of predators and prey and mating pressure, you can predict with about 80% accuracy, if tracking is solid, where that animal is, its emotional state, what it is intending to do as you follow its trail, even at the time it is doing it ahead of you on that trail, and much more. If you're not familiar with seeing tracks in leaf litter, if you haven't practiced on your belly looking at dust compressions trying to find a mouse over pavement, then you're not going to see, let alone interpret, the tracks and their features in order to get to that level. People who immediately jump into spirit tracking and then enter a scene where there might be a lost person do the entire tracking community a disservice. Just hang that out there as a possibility something maybe to aim for with your proficiency in the other five skills.